Do you ever read books about uh, times in the past and wish that you had been alive then? Uh, whether you're uh, interested in uh, the Tudors or the lifetime of Alexander the Great or uh, some uh, uh, amazing events that happened in the early 20th century. Sometimes you can read those things and you think, yeah, it would have been a brilliant time to be alive then. Maybe in reading the book of Deuteronomy, you think, you know, that would have been a, an amazing time to be alive. There were so many great adventures going on in that Old Testament period of history. It must have been a brilliant time to be alive. But actually, today's passage tells us the best time to be alive for us is now. Best to be alive now. And this is why. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Moses said, I'm now 120 years old and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you and you'll take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. It's interesting, isn't it, that Moses should not be the person to lead them through into the promised land. He was the one who led them out of Egypt 40 years before. And um, longevity does not seem to be a problem for him. He's 120 years old. Surely he could keep going for just a few more months and lead them into the promised land of Canaan. But he says, no, God's told me that's not going to happen. In fact, if you were in our numbers uh, series and thought for the day a while ago, you might know the story of why specifically God told Moses that he wouldn't be allowed to cross over. But Moses also says, look, uh, you're going to have a much better deal of it than this because God himself is going to lead you. Joshua is going to lead as well. Joshua, Moses' assistant, who became Moses' successor. Yeah, uh, Joshua is going to be um, uh, 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 leading you, but actually it's really God himself. You see, the people of the time must, must have thought that Moses was the best leader they could possibly imagine. Moses, no, 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 it's much better to be led by God himself. Elsewhere in the book, Deuteronomy 18, 18, God says to Moses, look, I'm going to raise up a successor for you. Someone is going to follow you and he's going to lead my people perfectly. And uh, I wonder if Moses uh, looked around and, and thought that God was talking about Joshua. And in a sense, obviously, he was. But as Christians, we look back and we say, you know, maybe God was uh, preparing another successor for Moses. The one who'd lead his people out of slavery and not then stop short nearly there, but lead them all the way into the promised land. Take them to heaven and his name. Jesus is uh, the same as the Hebrew name Joshua, who was Moses' successor. It was Joshua or Jesus, the one whose name means the Lord saves. There's no better time to be following God than now when we have Jesus as our leader. Moses only pointed towards him. He was a kind of um, uh, a prototype for all that Jesus would do. We have Jesus himself, God's son, leading us. And he will take us all the way there into the promised land. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way that Moses led your people out of Egypt and through the wilderness for those 40 years. Thank you for all that you accomplished through him. And we thank you for raising up Joshua as the successor to Moses who took them into the promised land. But we thank you far more for the Lord Jesus, your own son, the successor to Moses, who will uh, lead us all the way to heaven. And we ask you to help us follow his leading and obey his commands for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. That brings us to the end of our exploration of the book of Deuteronomy. It's a big book and we've always, uh, we always say this in thought for the day, with big books we only really get to scratch the surface. There's no substitute for reading it for yourself. Why not go and read the book of Deuteronomy? You don't have to read it all in one go. If you did, it would probably take you a couple of hours. I'm not going to sp spread it into a, a few smaller chunks. But read it. Great book. And look for the patterns of promise and fulfilment that we see going all the way through the Old Testament as we look forward to Jesus. Nearly there, nearly there. Hope to see you at church tomorrow. You can come live to the building or join us via the live stream or for the recording later in the day. God bless you and thanks for joining me. <laughs>